Dear friends, may I uh, first of all thank the uh, uh, Economic Ideas Forum for the kind invitation and especially the, uh, our host, the uh, Prime Minister uh, of Finland, Katainen, for the impeccable hospitality we have received from his government. Well, as you know, for the uh, past three years, my country, Greece, has been uh, in the eye of a perfect storm. Uh, we faced major internal problems and serious distortions we had to deal with. Another type of a crisis uh, surfaced uh, simultaneously, a, a European one, due to the major imbalance we had for a long time, that is a monetary union without a fiscal coordination. And a third crisis, a, a regional one, erupted in our southern neighborhood, wiping out one regime of the Arab world after the other, generating widespread regional instability, sending millions of refugees across the land borders and the seas. And as this crisis is still unraveling today, it threatens to unsettle even more among the peoples of the Middle East, caught in the crossfires of Islamic fundamentalism, political repression, the bloodshed of civil wars, and all of these very close to Greece's borders and shores. Mind you that uh, when I wake up in the morning, the first thing I ask is whether anything happened last night in Syria, because this affects directly my country. And this is in fact where we need an effective European policy that will help European border states like Greece to protect themselves in Europe at large. In my country, uh, we had to uh, separate these three different crises that all affected us and, and threatened us simultaneously while tackling our own fundamental problems. The good news, ladies and gentlemen, is that it seems that we are making significant pro progress. We avoided the worst. We have stabilized the country, both politically and financially. Indeed, we avoided the exit from the Eurozone, which would have been devastating for Greece and it would not have been good news for the Eurozone anyway. We accomplished the biggest debt restructuring ever with the decisive support of our partners. And this was definitely a sign of strength for the European Union. We managed to conclude in three years more than two thirds of the necessary fiscal adjustment, eliminating 10 GDP percentage points of deficit we are projecting a primary surplus for this year, ahead of our targets for the first time. So in just three years, we eliminated our competitiveness gap, accumulated in the last 10 years. And we are meeting all our targets in structural reforms, implementation, and privatization projects. The bad news, however, is that the Greek people are still paying a very high price. Above all, a prolonged recession. Greece is currently going through the sixth consecutive year of negative growth. Sixth. The accumulated loss was 25% of our GDP. More than 20% of our GDP was lost in the last three years alone. Unemployment has reached 27% for the general population. For the youth under 25, it has been over 60%, while more than 200,000 families have no working member. On top of more than uh, 1.5 million of the unemployed, we have a flood of illegal immigrants, about 2 million, flowing through our borders, mainly from Northern Africa, as well as from trouble spots in the Middle East and Southern Asia. Still, we made the record progress in a very short time and we paid the record price as a society. But this has been a real nightmare for the Greek people, but I have to tell you that we stood, the Greeks stood their position with dignity. Let me shift uh, our attention to the European challenges. Back in uh, 2010, we did not have a stability mechanism. Now we have one, already dealing with four members of the Eurozone, Greece, Ireland, Portugal, and Cyprus. Back then, we had a monetary union, but we didn't have a fiscal coordination. Now we are taking concrete measures to the effect, 
six packs, etc. We did not have a banking union. Now we're making significant progress on that front as well. Now all these issues are on the European agenda. We're in the process of resolving them. But I would like to broaden the scope and the agenda of this discussion by saying that for many years now a ghost is hovering over Europe, the ghost of competitiveness. In the year 2000, we were planning to be the most competitive region in the world, 10 years later, by 2010, that was the Lisbon agenda. Now we are in uh, 2013 and competitiveness remains a target we're still missing, like a mirage in the, in the desert. The more we are trying to get near it, the more distant it becomes. It is true, of course, that some member states, mainly in the north, are retaining or improving their competitiveness vis-à-vis -vis the rest of the world. But most of the Union has been losing ground. And what's worse, this competitiveness discrepancy among us is undermining the Union. So to reignite the convergence dynamics in Europe, we need to focus on competitiveness. But what is competitiveness in the first place? Is it is the ability of an economy or a company to sell international, internationally tradable goods to the world markets at the best prices for the same quality or at the best quality for the same price of goods. Production costs are very important, not only labor costs, all input costs, including energy prices, energy efficiency. Efficiency in general is important, product quality is important, taxes are highly important, innovation and investment in the real economy are very important, even geopolitics are important. So competitiveness is a multi-dimensional notion. To give just an example, if we reduce labor cost, but other components of the cost increase, then we are not improving competitiveness. And if we manage to bring down the overall production cost, but in the process we discourage investment due to high taxation, then we might improve competitiveness in the short run and lose in the long run. So we must improve our overall competitiveness on all dimensions. Some countries need to work on their unit labor cost, others need to improve their tax rates, some need more market taxes for their products. There is no one-size-fits-all strategy for all member states. On the other hand, however, there are some aspects that we need to work together. I will just mention the three major ones. Energy costs, capital flows and innovation. On these, we can only become competitive if we do it together, if we exploit all the potential that is synergies. It is a vital part energy cost and energy efficiency. It is a vital part of our overall production cost and competitiveness. We are lagging behind because we are energy thirsty. We have to import a large part of the energy that fuels our economy. And the problem is getting worse since nuclear power is becoming unpopular and the so-called Arab Spring has created uncertainty about many of our traditional suppliers, mainly from Northern Africa. Indeed, we have Four problems wrapped up in one. First, we need a long-term program of controlling and eventually reducing the price of energy in Europe. Secondly, we need to reduce our dependence, our dependency from abroad. Thirdly, we need to diversify our resources so that we will not depend too much on a particular source of an energy supply. And fourthly, we have to use the resources available to us in the most efficient manner. So it is not only diversification we should worry about, it is primarily self-sufficiency and efficient networking that will allow us to produce the perfect energy mix at the optimum price and consume it efficiently from one end of the Union to the other. Now there is a particular angle for Greece in this discussion. Greece has been blessed in three ways. Firstly, it is the paradise of almost all kinds of renewables. It has an extended sunshine potential and a very strong wind potential. So it can very well become the center for development of renewables. Secondly, we are positioned on the southeastern tip of Europe. We rely on the significant transportation routes from one global energy supplier to the European mainland. Thirdly and more importantly, 
Lately, there have been some very significant discoveries of new hydrocarbon natural reserves in the Eastern Mediterranean. In the Israeli and Cypriot exclusive zones, they have already been untapped and they are being developed as we speak. But there are strong indications of even bigger reserves in the Greek exclusive, exclusive, exclusive sea zone to the south and east of Crete and to the west in the Ionian Sea between Greece and Sicily. So we urgently need a twofold European initiative. First, a common European policy that, among others, will encourage country members to delineate their exclusive sea zones so they can search and develop their potential reserves. We need to fully abide by the international law of the sea so as to avoid any unproductive political posturing among any other neighboring countries in the region. Secondly, we need to plan and build the necessary infrastructures that will allow diversified supply from abroad and efficient distribution of resources across Europe. I'll give you a final example. Intercontinental pipelines attach you strongly to a particular supplier, whereas LNG, liquefied natural gas, allows independence from any particular supplier as long as you have LNG terminals on your shores and domestic pipelines to carry it from your shores to the mainland. To wrap it up, we will do what we have to do anyway in terms of structural reforms, banking union, streamlining and coordinating our fiscal policies and everything else in our current European agenda. But we also need to broaden the agenda, including all aspects and all dimensions of competitiveness, among which also a common energy policy. Remember that energy thirst is a weakness that we all share, one way or another, and the best way is to cement our union, to join forces, and to face our common weaknesses. And the best way to do it is on the basis of what our ideology is all about, the social market economy. It is our ideological framework because it can ideally combine and perfectly reconcile economic growth and social justice, efficiency with solidarity, production concerns with social coherence, short-term pragmatism with medium-term rationalism and long-term vision. If you want the social market economy, it's the modern age version of the most balanced way to do things, the stable way to global competitiveness, internal efficiency, to a flourishing democracy providing opportunities to all, and long-term prosperity for our people. That is exactly the common European future we all long and hope for. Thank you very much.